Now today I'll be showing how to test and replace a VTEC solenoid valve. We'll remove it from the engine, even disassemble it on the bench. Take a look at the plunger, the screening, and the harness connector. So let's just jump right into it. Now fortunately, getting access to the VTEC solenoid, which is right here, is super, super simple. As you can see, we're doing some work here on the S2000. But that being said, if you have the valve cover on and your air box here, still very, very accessible. Now you can test this while it is still attached to the cylinder head. I'm going to remove it and place it on the bench. It's easier for me to film and show you precisely on what we're doing. So you really have two connection points. Let me zoom in here. Okay, you have a solenoid right here. And on the bottom, where my thumb is, there's a tab. Press on the tab. Don't pull from the wiring. Pull from the body, and that comes out. Same with this, where my index finger is. Make sure you can see this. Pull, and that's it. And then we have, it looks like three 10 millimeter fasteners, two on the right and one right here on the left, then we can remove it from the cylinder head. Now one thing you also want to check is the engine oil. If you are low on engine oil, you can see this uh, trouble code on your vehicle. So make sure you check the engine oil. And as we pull this off, there's something else you want to look at. There we go. Just check the screening, make sure it's not clogged, not full of debris. This one is in good shape. This vehicle has 177,000 miles, so that's nice to see. Make sure you replace the gasket. This one, you can hear it's a little too hard. But let me show you how you can test this. Now testing the valve is very, very simple, and you just need a digital multimeter. Very inexpensive. This is less than $20 off Amazon. I'll have links in the description box below if you do need anything. And if you're not familiar with a uh, multimeter, very, very simple to use. So if you take a look here, we have a symbol. It looks like a Wi-Fi hotspot. That is for continuity. That just means two points make a connection. Okay, that's it. So if we take a look at the connector here, we have two prongs. All that I'm doing is placing one lead up on top, so the red lead in this case, and then the black lead I'll touch to the bottom, and we should hear continuity. We should hear this audible alert. If we don't, you need a new solenoid valve. If you do hear continuity, that's a very, very good starting point. So right down here, and right up here. Okay? So this is a very good sign. So that works. Now for this next test, I've temporarily reinstalled the valve, and you'll see why in a moment. Now taking a look at the multimeter, we need to do a resistance or an ohms test. That's the omega symbol on the multimeter. Okay, so let me make sure you guys can see that. Okay, cool. And then I have one wire with alligator clips on the end of them. What I'm doing is attaching one end to this harness connector and the other end will go to the uh, multimeter. And I'll give you another screenshot right now, just showing you how I'm setting this up. So again, I have one lead going directly to the multimeter. Okay, so in this case, the red lead. And then the black lead will go to ground. So that's any good metal point on the engine or on the body of the vehicle. And I'm going to use the exhaust manifold. Now a good reading is 10 to 15 ohms is a good number that you want to see so just watch the multimeter and we have about 16 ohms worth of resistance so that's perfect that's no problem this is working correctly now there are two more things that we can check if again this filter is not clogged you've done all the tests so far we can actually check the plunger inside the unit so up on top we have three 10 millimeter fasteners. Now sometimes these can solidify to the body. So just give it a slight twist. So we'll replace this gasket as a precaution. But right here you have a plunger. You want to make sure that it moves nice and freely. Okay? If it doesn't move, it's very stuck, corroded, so on and so forth. 
then of course that is your issue. Let me show you one more thing and we'll wrap it up. Now for this last part, unfortunately I have to explain it to you because I cannot do it. And that's because we need to turn on the ignition key. You're not starting, you're not cranking the vehicle, you're just turning the key to the on position. And if I do that in, in the current state that the car is in, with no injectors, right here fuel will squirt out everywhere and I don't want to do that obviously. But again, very very simple, just turn on the ignition key and then you want to find the harness connector. Okay, the harness connector, so again with this valve there's really two of them. We have one that has two wires and one with one wire. You want the two wire harness connector. And what you're going to do, what you're going to do is take a voltage reading. Super, super simple again. So to make this easy, just grab a paper clip and cut it in half. Okay? And stick it, place it, hold on, right, there we go, right in the harness connector. So I'll do this with you as if everything was connected. Whoops. Okay, so something like this. Then grab the multimeter. So on the multimeter you want the volts DC. Make sure you have the volts DC setting. And what you want to look for is battery voltage. So roughly 12 volts you want to see on this screen. So place down the multimeter. And this is where again these alligator clips are nice to have because you could just place one directly to the red lead okay like so I'll give you a different screenshot in a second let me just set this up and then the other alligator clip can go to the other paper clip something like this and just to give you one other viewpoint here we have one lead going to the red probe the other lead goes to the black probe and you should see battery voltage. Again, your ignition key is on, you should see battery voltage. If you do not, then check the wiring. And uh, chances are it's cut, it's frayed. Make sure that you have a good connection at the wiring. And that's how you test and replace one of these VTEC solenoid valves. They're very simple to do. And lastly, if you've done everything, your the engine has enough engine oil. You've checked for continuity, the ohms or the resistance, the plunger moves freely, the screen is not clogged, and you have power at the harness connector, but you still have trouble with this, with the code, then check the engine oil pressure. If you're low on oil pressure, this cannot perform correctly. Just YouTube on how to do that. But chances are, if you have trouble with this, it's low engine oil, or the screen is clogged. Sometimes the, uh, the gasket will start to degrade and then block the filter. So just check that. Chances are that's all it is. If you want to see more of the Honda S2000 behind me, please thumbs up, subscribe. We have a number of videos coming up very shortly on this thing, plus the first time starting it. So that should be uh, kind of exciting. Until then, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.